is it like to tour with your family? Oh, it's, it's just, it's fantastic. I've never really done it like this. Not really? Uh, where, well, my wife, come, you know, she'd come out for a little while, and my boys, when they were babies, we'd bring them out for a while, but uh, now they're young men, and they work for me, and they, they do an amazing job. <clears throat> so my wife decided to come for the whole tour, and it's just great. It's really nice. And uh, your birthday also is, uh, has any meaning, something special, uh, something that, that you will offer this time that will never happen again? Well, it seems that I've played on my birthday in South America a bunch of times, <laughs> you know. But uh, I, you know, there's not. It, I, I'm not going to do anything special. I'm always going to play the best show I can. But I like to play on my birthday. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I don't know. I, I, I like my birthday. You know? well, six six nineteen sixty. Yeah, six six <laughs> six six sixty. And on six six sixty six, I turn six. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be 63 tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> good. Um, you are now, you, you uh, told in an interview that you were doing uh, dragon sounds with your new guitar, with the Hydra. And uh, you were, there was a moment that you were mimicking voices, human voices with your guitar. And then you did some alien sounds. And now, why now this, this dragon idea? Uh, apart from the Siguelo thing that, that uh -huh. you have contact in the covers of, of your albums. Well, that, that, that came about organically, na natural. I didn't necessarily plan on that. What I planned on was to make an instrument that had, that I could play a whole song on. I could carry the whole song, so it, I wanted bass, neck, seven string, tune very low, twelve string, uh, harp strings. It's got a sample and hold and piezos and sustainers and a guitar synthesizer. And when I needed to figure out what it was going to look like, I, I wasn't sure because in my mind I was thinking of the song and, and how I could, you know, make it work. And, and also play the whole thing. Play the whole the thing. Yeah, you know, to use the whole instrument uh, in a very organic, natural, elegant way. And uh, then I was watching a Mad Max movie, and I saw uh, there's one scene where they're going through the desert, and there's a guy playing a guitar. It's crazy guitars blowing flames, and and, I, and it was steampunk fashion. I said, ah, there it is. So I started to look at some steampunk, and then I sent all that information to Ibanez, and they started to do drawings. And it just started to look like a dragon. <laughs> <You know? Whoa. laughs> so it started, it formed that way. Step by step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you play with Alcatraz, you play with David Lee different stuff, uh, with White Snake. Is there something now that you're playing uh, as a solo artist that you miss from a band? No. Nothing at all? No. I, I like collecting experiences. Okay. And with all those bands you just mentioned, they're totally different experiences. And I loved every one of them, I enjoyed them all. And, but now, <clears throat> with whatever time I have left, I plan on making uh, the music that is most important to me and, and whoever else enjoys it. Uh, on the other hand, you have a lot of collaborations. I, I counted 44 collaborations. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, Bolivia, Midloaf, Two Cellos, oh, uh, so all good. very different. So. Uh, what do you require uh, artistically, I, I mean, uh, for, to participate in a collaboration, to get involved in a collaboration? Well, first, I need to listen and I need to feel that I can contribute appropriately. And uh, the people who are asking me need to know that I don't know what they're going to get. 
you know, and I don't, I can't really take direction, you know, like yes. play like Stevie Ray Vaughan or play like this. I can't, I can't really do that. But they don't, they don't come to me for that. You know, they come to me for, okay, it's Vi, you know, we don't know what we're going to get, but it'll be something. So I really enjoy all those experiences. And, um, yeah, I need to feel like I can contribute appropriately. Do you have a f some favorites, some something that you really did that uh, it satisfied you uh, fully? Well, most of them do. You know, most of them do. I just recently did the Polyphia one. I love the way that came out. You know, it was like a uh, new generation, old generation. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's like they they invited the old man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I listened to it. And it's it. I love their music. It, it's not, I don't write or play like that. They're like new level kind of mm -hmm. technique and stuff. And very technical also. Very, yeah, and very precise. And, and uh, I thought, well, to contrast that, I'll do some long melody kind of things and soaring. And uh, it worked, it seemed to work very nice. I was surprised with the mid loaf contributions. <laughs> That was pretty crazy because it was uh, the most epic thing I heard from Midlove that, that he's naturally epic. Yeah. So uh, when you uh, take part in the, in, in, it was uh, a couple of albums, yeah. different albums. So when you participated with him, there was a chemistry or did you just put the solos? Well, they reached out mm -hmm. and I knew the producer and um, I said, well, let me hear it, you know, and yeah okay I like this and I went to the studio and meat was there and I've I've worked with him you know uh, I, I loved him you know and it was fun he was he was so interesting and so passionate and animated you know I mean it was big love, you know it was fantastic uh, I want to know about that uh, OC album that you actually have with him that never was uh, mm -hmm. Uh, sort of uh, lounge it. Yeah, well, Ozzy was working on a record. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to get him with some other players. Yes. You know, some writers. To yeah, write so them. most of the yeah. So he came to see me play, and we got together, and we just had such a great time, you know? And we just kept going and going and going. So we would demo it. We weren't recording a record, you know? We would. Uh, I was writing songs and, you know, we were, and I wrote probably 15 songs. Oh, you know? so many. Yeah, because that's what you do, you write a lot. And, you know, we demoed them, but the demos are just maps, you know, they're not finished. And I had, I had Ozzy probably on like three songs, you know, just, and we thought we'd like to make a record. Mm -hmm. You know, but then the record company felt, well, you already are halfway through your own record here, so take what you like from Vi and use it on your record. So he, he did a beautiful uh, version of a song that we wrote, uh, also with Lenny, mm -hmm. uh, called My Little Man. Yes. And that turned out great. But, you know, Ozzy and I, you know, we were a little disappointed that mm -hmm. we couldn't continue to make a full record. But it was, it was right, you know, at that time I had already really started doing my solo music. Uh, it was and a record company or, or was it Channel? Uh, I, it was a record, it was, record. It, it was, it was both, you know, okay. they just felt, no, you don't want to start over, mm -hmm. you know, just take what you like with Steve and then go back so, to make your record. Uh, I was thinking kidnapping Sharon and then uh, ask for a reward or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a great experience with Sharon. Sharon was, she's, I she's really, great. I know. She's great. You know, she's funny. She's tough. You know, you don't mess with Sharon. No, no. no. At all. But um, I spoke. Uh, it, 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 you know, things get blown out, and I said I have a, a record sitting on the shelf with Ozzy. I have. The, we have songs enough, but you know that that's you, that's what you do. You write a lot of songs. You know, but no, 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 it, it, the record company has all the tapes. <laughs> so, how is it like to tour with your family? Oh, it's, it's just, it's fantastic. Uh, what made you uh, 
um, release the Bailash project 31 years after yeah. it happened. And, and especially, why did you release it and almost untouched? When I recorded it 31 years ago, uh, I was right in the middle also of sex and religion. Yeah. And I had to finish that. And I was going to go back and work on the Gash music, but he was tragically killed in a motorcycle accident. And I just put the whole thing on the shelf. I, I, that happens a lot. You know, you start working on something and, you, you know, you, you might leave it for a while and not go back to it. But you didn't, it didn't go out of your mind. No, I listen to it every year. And I liked it a lot. I really liked it. And I thought, one day I'm going to release this, but maybe I go in and fix this and, you know, try to add another song that's maybe instrumental. And then I just, last year, I just decided I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to take it as it is and just mix it and release it. And I'm so surprised at how well received it is. I mean, it's, it, it, the journalists I speak to just seem to really like it, and it's, it's getting played on the radio in America, which is very rare for my music. And uh, the fans really like it. It's a little snapshot mm -hmm. into a, a side of me. Yeah, your, your, your most funny side, maybe. The most playful thing. Yeah, very simple, straight ahead, rock and roll, playful, up, uplifting, good melodies, just rock and roll. It's like every time I've ever uh, been in a band that was a big rock band, there was always a lot of people involved, which is great, you know, and there's committees involved, you know, mm -hmm. everything I recorded, a lot of times, you know, I had to go through the, the band members, the, the leader, the record company, the producer, the engineers, and when I made the Gash record, there was a committee of one, me, and I just, it was just pure freedom, you know, I, I, I just did it in like a week and, and it was just so much fun and it really hit the mark for what we wanted at that time. About the Sex and Religion album, it actually blew my mind when, when it was released. Um, why did you didn't insist with this collaboration with Devin Thompson? Why didn't I Yeah, why continue? Didn't, didn't you continue, yes. Well, Devin was very young. Mm -hmm. He was a teenager, you know, uh, and he was in incredibly talented. He, but for me at that time, I was uh, very interested in just making my music. And Devin had a great voice, mm -hmm. you know, amazing, amazing, like unbelievable. And uh, that's what I needed. I didn't realize back then how brilliant he was, you know, I mean, I didn't allow him really, you know, and uh, because I wanted everything my way, you know, and uh, so Devin, uh, you know, he needed to explode because he's just brilliant. You can't contain him, you know, when he was with me, he was like a, a very colorful bird in a small cage, you know, <laughs> but he did great, uh, and we made a great record, but Devin uh, needed to do his thing, you know, and then once he started releasing his solo music, I, I just was stunned, you know, I couldn't believe how, how much was in there, how intense, you know, and uh, I, I became a big fan, and then we, you know, we, we have worked together through the years, you know, little, little things here and there, you know, he does something for my record, I do something for one of his. And it's funny because I always get asked, uh, who would you like to collaborate with, you know? And I'm, I'm willing to collaborate with anybody that resonates with what I do, you know? Mm -hmm. But my solo music, um, it's, I, I, don't, I don't collaborate. You know, I have a vision and my goal is to create 
a catalog of music that's undiluted. But, but I'm a good collaborator outside of my music, okay. you know? And it's funny because I think about it sometimes, who would I like to collaborate with if I, and it's Devin. But it's, it's more like, uh, like what we do sometimes now, you know, if, listen to this, do something to it, you know? Okay, give it back. You know, that's, it's really fun. Um, first one, uh, you had an accident last year, uh, something while you were making pizza? <laughs> sort of, yeah. Well, it... Uh, I, I didn't understand. Yeah, you. okay, before the pandemic, yeah. <clears throat> I, I started to have a shoulder problem. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was, and I tried everything, and then it got really bad. You know, it got just all torn up. So I had to get surgery. Yeah. You know, so and it was great, it kind of fixed it. And then the pandemic hit, and you know, the, the, when I got back from the hospital, I, I, I couldn't even move my arm, so I, I wrote a song with one hand that was called Knapsack. Yeah. But then while I was healing, about six months into it, yeah, I was making pizza, and you know, you, you gotta pull the oh, with the, the, sh yeah. the sh 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 yeah. shovel that, oh, yeah, and I did it. The, 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 the dough was sticking, so I did it really hard, and, and my arm was up like this, and oh. so that, that re-injured, so I had to move my American tour, mm -hmm. and when I went out on the European tour, I wasn't really quite healed, uh, so I couldn't bring the Hydra, I, I wanted to bring the Hydra, but I couldn't play it, Okay. but then through that tour, I healed pretty good. Yes. And when we did the next American tour, um, I brought the Hydra, and it was great. And I took it to Europe on our, our eight-week European tour, the second European tour. It was great. And I decided to bring it to South America. Okay. So you'll see it. Years ago, you had some problem in your arm over here in Argentina uh, with some food poisoning and you went to a hospital. Is that, is that right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I, I remember uh, an interview with Nick Six and, and he asked you, and what was it? Uh, well, sometimes when you're a foreigner yeah. and you go to a particular city, you eat the food and it, it might take a day, you know, to get acclimated, mm -hmm. but um, we came in through Mexico and I got pretty sick. And by the time we got to Argentina, I was pretty sick. <laughs> and I had to go to uh, the hospital. And while I was in the hospital, there was just some complications, you know, with the intravenous. Yeah. And uh, there was, it sounds terrible, it just sounds terrible, but there was bad blood that went in, oh. and it, da it damaged my arm, uh, but I'm fine now, okay. everything's, everything's, you know, you tour, I've been touring for 44 years, okay, all sorts of stuff happens, you know, all sorts of things, 99% of them are really good, you know, but there's always, you get colds, you get, you know, You, 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 you know, you might sprain your hand, it gets hit or something, you know. So you, you, you adjust, you work around, everybody goes through that stuff. Yeah. But I was fine. Okay, in a very brief space of time, uh, we lost Edmund Hallen and now Jeff Beck. Uh, what are your reflections on, on both these players? Oh, so much deep appreciation and, and like a love. You know, uh, Edward, what can you say? You know, he, he, he was the king, he really was. And uh, Jeff was, you know, different obviously, but the, 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 Jeff was always so nice. He was always so kind and funny, incredible sense of humor. I knew him. And, and just, he was, he was the chosen one. I, I can't, in my mind, imagine you know, I mean, I see what he's doing, I can hear it, but he had such an undeniable touch on the instrument. Uh, to have those 
as role models mm -hmm. when you're a guitar player is a gift. You know, and they came, they delivered, and they left, just like all of us are going to do. But uh, I'm so happy that I was alive when they were alive. Okay, the last one. Uh, you know, all the fans, you will get this question everywhere. But uh, couldn't we have some revenge from that Crossroads movie when you actually beat Ralf Macchio? Please. One of these days, Jack Butler is going to kick Ralph Macchio's little white ass. <laughs> they never ask you to participate in Cobra Kai? Uh, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all? No, no. <laughs> it, it, that was a lot of fun back then. Thank you very much. Thank you very Steve. much.